put it, I want to pull the switch itself off. Ah, there we go. This has got four connections on the back. Hang up here. Now I'm going to assume that the two thinner wires, these two up here, are for the lighting because they're not going to need that much current. And these two thicker ones, uh, the terminal or the, are what's switched to uh, power on the D mister on the rear screen. So I'm going to remember those. I'm going to take this out and test it with the multimeter. And to do that, I'm using my multimeter. I'm going to put it on diode or continuity check, which basically, when I touch these, it should show zero. If I press this again, I get a beep. So when the two things are connected together, there's a beep. Simple. And what I want to do with these is connect them one to one terminal, one to another. This is where you kind of need to be very dexterous or have extra hands or have some kind of clips or stuff to kind of hold stuff, everything all together. I'm going to do it sans clips like that. And the switch closed. I'm getting nothing. But if I rock it back a bit, it's beeping. So that's the switch closed. That's the switch open. With it like halfway rocked closed, it's beeping. So showing me that when the switch closes, it's not really closing properly, which could be corroded terminals, bent terminals, whatever. So we'll open this up, pop the side, pop the top of the switch off. Hopefully things won't go everywhere and then we'll be able to see what we're doing. So I'm putting some force, levering the case outwards. I think there's some pegs in the case that fit into holes just in this rocker switch. So I've done that side. Do the same here. There we go. That should lift out. Don't go exploding. Okay. And we have a broken tab there. So this tab here looks to have broken off. That holds this in place. This is maybe like a light guide. Yeah, so that. This orange plasticky translucent plastic piece here is a light guide right down in there. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see this right down in there is a, is a little bulb. Not quite enough light. There's a bulb right down in there at the top. But no terminals though. There. I'm going to have to get these clips off here. One. Two, three, four, and I guess that's where all the kind of terminal stuff will be. Maybe I didn't need to remove this. But let's have a go. Yeah. Yep. Are those two clips done. And you see we're starting to get the back of the switch out. Same here, I'm trying to kind of keep it together. Yeah, that's coming. Last one. Okay, I'm going to pull this off gently. Okay, so we've actually got two bulbs in there. See the two bulbs on the top and put that to one side. Here are the contacts. 
and they are grimy. So I'm going to clean those up. Yeah, that's pretty grimy. I'm going to get some contact cleaner, maybe just some brake cleaner, and a little bit of something a little less solid than this screwdriver tip. Clean these up. Do the same with this here. So just just clean everything up. And that's cute as well, that's... Ah, two balls, I guess one for a general... Ooh. Let's just put that back in there. You see this green piece of plastic here? I think that's a diffuser, so there'll be like general illumination. So one of these bulbs will be on all the time. And uh, not on all the time, it'll be on when your lights are on. So then you get this here illuminated in green. And then the other one We'll go down that light guide and kind of indicate that this is on. I think that's a bit like that. Okie dokie, get some cleaner. Got a small piece of microfiber cloth here and a bottle of IP8. Let's see if this doesn't clean up these contacts. Just looking to get clean metal, really. on all of them, all round. Just taking anything dull surface off. I'm gonna try and attack this orangey stuff here. I'm gonna use a microfiber, but then drive it round with the screwdriver. Go for these ones in the middle. Do, do, do. We get the best chance we've got at having this working a bit more reliably. Again, we can probably get replacements, which is reasonably easy. I haven't looked, but it's nice to be able to work out why something's broken. Because if there was nothing wrong in this switch, then maybe there's like a wiring issue. Lay it down the line. Get those. It's still kind of wear quite visible wear pattern in the center of each of these. Okay. We'll just do what we can. That's already a lot better. See this one. Looking a lot cleaner than this one. And this is sprung a little bit here. It looks to me like this should be able to go up and down relatively easily. I mean, why, why else? If there's a spring in there, there's a spring in there for a reason. So I might just move that up and down by hand a bit. If that frees it up. A little bit, but it's not. Plain sailing. A bit more banging. I'm gonna get a bit of lube in there. So this is now a bit prouder than the plastic. I'm gonna, this is the only grease or sort of slippy stuff I've got here, so I'm gonna stick some of this in. It's not necessarily the right thing, but Put a little bit on the end of this cable wrap thing. And I'll just put some down there. Down there. Probably not much needed. I mean, it might be that there's not any needed, but. Put a bit on this. This side as well. Again, just a tiny little bit. Just to give it as best a chance it's got. It might be that these metal tines are a little bit bent, but I would be surprised at that. 
There we go, that's much, much smoother. So, of course, if this, were, if this was getting stuck and it was supposed to be sprung, if it was getting stuck down here, then these contacts won't have been making as good a con uh, contact. These contacts won't have been contacting this, these two here, as well as they should have been. So hopefully that's going to solve our issue. Now, how does this go back together? This goes in here, this way up. Yep. So here's the body of the switch. You can see the sprung metal piece in the middle there. This is the, let's call it a carriage. And the carriage has got the triangular or indent paint piece here. And I'm gonna flip that over. And also here, it's kind of like a groove in the center of a peg and that, and there's a corresponding spinal spine, slideway in the middle. So when I put this round in like that, that keeps the carriage centered this way and this is where the detent is. Great, and now this, just double check. A bit more of a clean. Oh yeah, let's test the bulbs. Again, I'm gonna use a continuity setting on the multimeter. So when I touch these two, I get nothing. I'm gonna come in and buzz, oops, from there to there. That's a zero, more or less, and there to there. Okay, they both look like they're working fine. Great. Interesting, there's a bit of wear here. Looks like the switch has been pressing down on the plastic. Maybe even melting it a little bit. Not sure that's supposed to look like that. It looks like wear and melting to me. It might be the switch is getting too hot. Uh, if you have poor electrical connection, the resistance is higher, which means it's all gonna get hotter. So that might be a thing. Uh, do I wanna try and smooth that out some? Maybe. Do some just quick smoothing of this because if this, I think the I can't hold these. This nubbin here, raised point, I think slides up and down in this channel, and you can see where it was resting, and it, that, that's going to provide a bit of a sticking point for this. So I'm just going to do a little bit of shaving with a screwdriver. I might get a, a scalpel blade on it just to try and smooth that off a little bit as well. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, this is the wrong tool for the job. But. Right, that's not as bad. I'm not going to worry too much about that. Okay, so I've got that carriage in place. The metal parts are still springing up and down quite nicely. These go. Maybe I'll just put that over the detent for now. Maybe not. Uh, let's just think about this. So this part, this switch has got two arms. It rocks here on the holes and, and then you've got this amount of leverage to move this carriage up and down. So to make it I need to make sure that when I assemble everything back together, these arms locate in the right place in the holes there. So I think I'm gonna go for putting this back in here first. And making sure there's grooves in the side here. And line the pegs in the housing up with the grooves in the switch arms, and then this should. Okay, and that's our switch rocking and it has no detent because 
we don't have the rest of the assembly back in place. Uh, I'm going to leave this piece of plastic out. I don't want it floating around in there and possibly like stopping some of the moving parts from moving. Okay, now we've got carriage and we can see in here, that's where the, the arms from the, the switch are. So when I move this, those arms move. I want to make sure that when I put the carriage in place, those switch arms locate in those holes. Just needs to go this way up. Does it? Oh, they don't go in the holes. I think the switch arms actually locate in these divots on the side. You see there's like an angle. I think the switch arms locate in there. So I'm gonna put it all the way to the end like that. I'm gonna simulate a bit of pressure on here. Right. That's fine. That's work. That's I think as it should be. Yep. That switch is activating this back and forth, which is cool. And now I need to get this back in place. I think that's this way around. We've got the bulbs at the top here and we've got the recesses inside this housing. Like that. So I think it's going to be a case of, that's all fine. Try not to trap my gloves. sure all four clips locate around the side which they do let's okay so that mechanically seems to be working fine and we'll get the multimeter in again put it onto the beat mode so try and get a nicer angle for you so it isn't and when we, we touch the probes we get beep, so that's connectivity. So I'm gonna come around to these main terminals here and here. And it's gonna be, okay, so that's the switch closed. That's the switch open, closed, open, closed. So that feels a lot better to me. That gives me confidence it's gonna work. So let's go and uh, try it in the car. All right, we're back inside the car. Connector only goes one way. That's nice. Start the engine. Now let's see. Hey. Right. go nice stick that back in that is fixed all right job done simple fix uh, took the switch apart found there was a spring on the plate that was a bit seized up cleaned that up cleaned all of the terminals terminals yeah terminals on the back and the kind of moving metal parts inside that get sprung and get adjusted, actuated, moved by this rocker switch. And let's just do it one more time. Ah, let's see if the light's still working too, so I can turn the car lights on. Can't really see that. Is that illuminated? Hmm, no. I'm gonna have to check that out. None of these have illuminated. This stuff does. This does lit up, but these are not. Which might be a fuse problem, but it's not a huge thing. Much happier to have that working. Cool. Simple fix, five, 10 minutes. Don't be afraid to use your multimeter. It's not that hard to do simple stuff like that. Um, yeah, back on the road. Catch you later, peace.
quick update, it's been on for about five minutes and you can see it's just starting to clear so yeah and you can feel a bit of heat in it as well.